I was born and I died on the same day. Well, well, not the same day exactly, or this would be a pretty short interlude. The same day, 21st of June, but several years apart. I came into the world under the sign of the crab, cancer. And I left the same way. From day one, I needed reassurance, intimacy, the typical moon child. Oh, my diary. As I toddled into toddlership, my desire to be popular, the leader of the pack, a star, was obvious. I was devoted to my little toddler chum and roared like the lion I was if anyone or anything did anything to hurt them. But they were fickle. When they um, decided that baking cakes in the small plastic fake nursery school kitchen was more appropriate to their yummy mummy status than building a kingdom of such magnitude and excellence never seen before or since in the sandpit of Chipper Snapper's nursery. I became a force so wild, so reckless that the legend of El Bambino is still whispered in the corridors. My ego was shattered. My pride crushed. I walked away, my head held high, my heart smashed to smithereens. I never looked back. <clears throat> I've heard that uh, slummy mummy status was achieved. Not quite the look they were aiming for. <laughs> my yearning to love and be love in return didn't stop as I grew into a young adult. But scarred from my early experiences, I had learnt, and I was fussy. I took a step back from the limelight. Well, if I wasn't centre stage, I wouldn't have a big audience to witness my demise, would I? I managed to keep my faith in others. I refused to be cynical, and this was rewarded. My reward, a tall, willowy, sparkly-eyed, quick-witted, kind-hearted specimen of pubescence that made every nerve in my body tingle. My first love, in some respects. My last love, my only love. He changed everything. Together we grew. We explored. By my mid-twenties, I needed balance. I had begun to role play the, the, the role of dutiful wife and, and loving mother. In reality, I yearned for independence. I kept saying yes, but was dying to say no. I wanted an easy, uncomplicated life. But when I got it, I, I realised it, it didn't give me the, the intimacy and reassurance my crustacean roots craved. Air became heavy. I saw things through cloudy, opaque lenses, not, not the rose-coloured um, glasses of my youth. acting as I was expected to, not as I wanted to. Perception of me was high, my, my esteem was low, I was suffocating. I had to get out. I got out. <laughs> I stopped treading water. I became venomous. I had a sting in my tail that wasn't there before. I burrowed deeper and deeper. I was compelled to hurt. I needed to see others suffer. I shut down. 
I needed no one. I took aim. A new fire burned in my belly. I had a, I had a new desire. The desire to take control of my destiny. Optimism returned. I was reunited with my children, my family, my friends. I had lost the beast and regained the human. I rediscovered the big heart I was born with and I, I longed to share it with the world. As I reached my mid-forties, I realised I needed adventure. To get out of the rut I'd found myself in. To climb mountains, run, sing through the fields. A true sound of music epiphany. I shirked the domesticity that had been forced on me and yearned to be wild, untamed, reckless. And then, I became a nanny. I rose to the occasion. I was proud of what I'd achieved. Proud of my kids, my grandkids. I regained a pride in myself. With patience and perseverance, I found the person I had been. The person I was born to be. The person I was dying not to be. And I was content. Contentment has its side effects. For years, I'd wanted bigger breasts, shapely hips, and a booty to shake. In my 50s, when I got them, I realised I no longer wanted them. Often, I used to exclaim, I, I'm not putting on weight. It's water retention. It's, um, it's a common known fact that women that uh, put on a little bit of weight live longer than the men that mention it. <laughs> One of life's mysteries, isn't it? How you can yearn for something for so long and when you get it, becomes the most abhorrent thing you can imagine. I lost the water I'd been carrying, but with it I lost my way. I was being pulled in, in two different directions. When, when I was being pulled up, I, I was being pulled down. When I was being pulled down, I, I was being pulled across. I, I, didn't, I didn't know which, which path to take. Which road to choose? I, I longed to know where my life was leading me. Th there was a void in my life that I was desperate <coughs> to fill. Dying to fill. Dying. I started to forget things. Recent things. There's no rhyme or reason. Um, random access memory. Diamonds might be forever. <laughs> memory clearly isn't. I, I hated the restrictions my failing mind had on me. I, I hated the fact that I couldn't remember where I left my keys, but could clearly remember him. The way, we, the way he made me feel, the freedom we shared, the love we made. I wanted it back. I wanted him back. I needed him. I wanted him. But then I remembered. I remembered how, how he penned me in, caged me. I remembered how I was so desperate to fly, to spread my wings, and 
he wouldn't let me. He was bullish, stubborn, cold and jealous. It wasn't regret I felt. It was the opposite. I knew that without him, I wouldn't have become me. I no longer wanted him, but was glad that he was once mine and I his. I was no longer in two minds. I had chosen my path, or rather my path had chosen me chose the left. Um, language, logic, numbers, reasoning. I was left with the right. Emotions, images, creativity, wanting, longing, need, desire. I was born and I died on the same day. Not the same day, obviously. The same day, 21st of June, but several years apart. I'd spent my life dying, dying to run, to walk, to leave school, to fall in love, get married, retire. It was only when I was dying that I realised I'd forgotten to live. I came into the world under the sign of the crap, cancer, and I left the same way. 